Hello, hello everyone and welcome back finally to War on the Sea as the US Navy. It's been a very, very long time of course uh, since we last uh, loaded this one up. In fact, since uh, December, middle of December we last played this uh, due to a house move, um, rather last minute one. Uh, got some bad news about that. But so we're all here now, uh, all moved in and very happy indeed to be back at the YouTubes. So uh, a bit of a refresh on what we're actually doing here. We have got very close to uh, a campaign victory here. Uh, we are priming ourselves for a position to upgrade Guadalcanal to level four airfield. Just need some more fuel there. In fact, a very painful 20 more fuel is all we need to upgrade that to level four airfield there. But we do have some supplies coming in from Australia. Very, very long trip there. They do have a small amount of fuel, which is largely uh, engineering there, which is absolutely fine. We do need loads and loads of that. Do have some large supply group over here with a lot of engineering as well as some supplies. And we do have the main bulk of uh, fuel over here in a couple of Cimarron's with supplies group one. And that's of course bringing some standard supplies and engineering in the mix as well. Focusing a lot on engineering because uh, we can't carry too much of that at one time. And it does take once again, a lot of engineering to upgrade uh, Guadalcanal as well. So we're gonna to want to keep that in stock. So once the supply group one comes over, how long exactly will that take? If we redirect that, so that will take 21 hours. That's absolutely fine. And if we'll get an update about uh, when we upgrade Guadalcanal's airfield once again there. And then it's only a case of upgrading it to a level five airfield for the final upgrade there to actually claim a campaign victory. And that will be the end of this series then and there. We do have Task Force Lightning, consisting of an Iowa and an Alaska, as well as a couple other cruisers and destroyers there. Going to scout around, we're looking at a possible uh, cruiser task force over here. Don't believe that's a destroyer task force. We do believe this is quite likely a submarine task force over here. But we are going to be under threats from two carriers we did hit in this rough position if we put a marker there um, to remind ourselves did hit that previously. We can see we have spotted that and a couple other groups dotting around in this area below uh, New Georgia and such uh, previously. But while we did hit one of the carriers, we did hit a Shokaku, um, it did not by any means go down. It was able to weather the storm. We didn't quite get enough bomb hits onto that. Um, whether it's actually put the flight deck out of commission, we'll see. I highly doubt it. The uh, AI does have a bad habit of uh, just ignoring any flight deck uh, damage to it and just sending out the planes as and when it feels anyway. We do have towards the north though, Task Force Brawler having a poke around for any more surface groups and that's absolutely fine. We do have an Illinois and an Ohio uh, in that particular task force. Very, very uh, powerful indeed is this task force. So it can act independently and try and force engagements. So from my memory, we can probably actually take on that carrier task force with a surface engagement. Um, so looking at the time, it's uh, nine in the morning, 20 minutes past nine. So we do have a lot of time of uh, aerial patrols to watch out for. But if we redirect uh, task force brawler down here, uh, more southerly, we might might just be able to intercept the uh, carrier group down here. Uh, the Shokaku does travel at a fairly decent uh, speed, so that might not be the case because of course there's a lot of uh, ground to cover there. But uh, we shall see. And as a reminder, we do have this double Yamato task force uh, headed or backed up by I think at least two Fusos and a Congo. Have to remind ourselves of that exactly. Uh, but <laughs> it's, if it's going to sit there, that's absolutely fine. We'll just keep an eye on that. Uh, we will be fighting that before uh, we finish the series. I'm not entirely sure where it might be today, might not. But for today, we do have to worry about what so just noticed over here under the cover of this particular recon plane is actually a cruiser task force, which Task Force Lightning is in fact trying to intercept there. So we'll just the, check the time there, 1.3 hours. Uh, to possibly intercept that and that will clear the way for our much needed supplies onto Guadalcanal. So that's the main goal for today is dealing with that. And as ever Task Force Lightning has found its mark and we are point blank by the looks of things. It's just pause to get some uh, orders out and take stock of this situation exactly. Um, let's bring our ships about to broadside the enemy. Not ideal with the amount of torpedoes the Japanese will of course be carrying. We have Miyoko 
Excellent, and uh, we have an Oedo in the number three position. Number two is an Akazuki. Lovely stuff, another Akazuki in the number one lead position. Uh, let's see, number five is an Alba, which is brilliant stuff. And we have another Akazuki here. So a lot of guns on the destroyers, very fast firing guns, gonna be massive, massive threat to our own uh, destroyers as ever. So it's quite likely we're gonna be losing one today. And <laughs> when wouldn't we be? So we're gonna get the uh, Alaska to fire onto the Miyoko here. We will certainly identify that. And uh, we've got to shave off some rust. Uh, I've not played this game for quite some time now. Um, what we will do is, of course, get narrow spotting fire to begin with, and that should build up a solution while we are turning our guns. Uh, just redirect that to make sure it does come up as Miyoko on the target indicator there. That's excellent. Get the Iowa onto that as well, just to really batter down this heavy cruiser, because uh, that will certainly do some nasty, nasty damage onto any of our ships. If it does so choose. So what else do we have? We have the Philadelphia. We're gonna use the Philadelphia onto the Alba over here. That can certainly identify that. Lovely stuff. And because of this uh, mod, they have 21 in total. So we've sunk quite a few actually there, which is rather interesting. But of course, not enough. I think we dealt actually with uh, all of the foot attackers here. Yeah, they only have two, uh, which is of course standard. Let's uh, redirect that, make sure it says Alba there, get some spotting fire, not gonna hold. We'll hold our fire with our Iowa to begin with. Um, and that's just so that we don't waste too many shells there. Um, let's see, next is Astoria, and that is somewhat damaged, so we have to be careful there. The magazine's somewhat exposed due to some, uh, some pre-existing damage there. And that can go onto the Alba as well. And we will fire out completely there. Uh, so, I think that's one of our larger ships. We do have the Australia over here, which I really think should go for the Oido, because that is a rather, rather nasty piece of work, that ship, which we've learnt through this series. Uh, where are we? Oido, there we go. Sunk quite a few again out of the 25 available, but still far too many there, far too many available for the enemy. So we'll still be seeing quite a few of those out do we fire our secondaries? Not just yet. So, we'll come back with our destroyers. Um, they certainly need to focus fire onto one or two Akazukis, really, don't they? So get the Jackal and the Waller, I think, onto the number six over here, because that's the easiest firing angles to begin with by the looks of things. Let's go to DD, and we will just identify everything else as Akazuki there. It's quite easy to do. Lovely stuff. Double check we're targeting the number six. Don't need to use spotting, just get firing immediately. And we said we were gonna use the waller on that as well, didn't we? So, lovely stuff. Use the uh, minimap to our help there, lovely. Might of course wanna get some torpedoes firing from our um, allied ships here. Would be nice. I think we get the 3D onto the number one over here, simply because it's fairly close. That should help us out there. We get the tailor on to help with that as well. We do have some minor damage, loss of funnel actually onto the tailor, which is not ideal at all on a destroyer. We'll see what happens. Let's start firing out, press play. Enemy does, yeah, we can see they're already firing out torpedoes there, so we can imagine they're gonna fire torpedoes at pretty much everything. It means we do want to get turning and braking. Let's uh, go full speed with the Afridi, turn round over here, probably do the same with the Australia. Uh, that's not gonna help with our firing solutions, but we do need to get moving as quickly as possible if that's the case then. Break off over here, move out Alaska. Mm. Don't want to move away, but we're gonna have to eventually. Let's full speed with the Philadelphia, move straight there. Hello, Iowa rather can, hmm. I think actually really slow down. Really, really slow down there. And probably the same Astoria, actually, yeah, we can turn out and follow the Australia. If we pause very quickly to take stock of this and think about exactly how to do that. Uh, let's play Astoria. Let's see, actually follow and form up there. They should be fine. Um, Waller, who activates some sort of sonar, but our speeds aren't really gonna help that. But we can start to get any sort of hits over here. 
Not yet. We are, of course, holding with our Iowa, and that does have an amazing solution now. So we are going to start firing out some of that Miyoko. Now, we are assisting Duck to fire shell fire with our Iowa at the moment, but assuming that the enemy is firing their torpedoes at uh, the Iowa, that have been leading quite a bit. We do see some fires already onto the Afridi and the wall are very, very nasty indeed. Very uh, sad to miss the uh, Miyoko already, getting a lot of shots actually onto the Akazuki there, which is excellent for us. That will be doing a lot more damage than uh, we might want to give it credit for actually. But looking at the Afridi, yeah, that's that's going to go down. Look at all that damage already on that. Can we get some emergency torpedoes up perhaps? Uh, let's get a two spread, mangle fire out just for the lead over here. Probably not enough lead really. Alaska is turning in, so we have to watch out for that. Yeah, the 3D sunk. Did get a couple of torpedoes out. Let's slow down, I think, with the Alaska because that's probably going to get hit by torpedoes if it carries on like this course. Mm, not too sure about torpedoes from anyone else at the moment, though. What else is under fire? The waller is under fire. That's not too surprising, really. If we smoke up, take off a sonar is not really going to help really. Uh, let's slow down a tad and move out over here. I were not an ideal firing position at all so we're just going to have to move anyway and actually I think turn out rounds to a massive port side turn there. How are we doing against the Miyoko? It is pretty much dead in the water but not sunk. We can see it is still firing its uh, one and three guns there. Which is very, very nice indeed to see. In fact, the Miyoko is now sinking, so we're going to take the Iowa over to. Um, what can it fire us at the moment? Not really anything, to be honest. Uh, let's try and get it onto Oido then, for the minute, because you can guess it's a uh, rear gun firing there. And I believe we had the uh, Alaska firing onto the Miyoko as well, and that's got a very nice angle onto the Alba, so we'll just fire out there. Standard, standard firing there, lovely stuff. And where we can just see some torpedo threats coming in here, somehow very narrowly missing our Alaska there. If you look very closely at the uh, minimap there, you can see they've just straddled us. And looking through the stream of the torpedoes, it, not entirely sure how that's worked because that's clearly come on our line and passed through us somehow. I think at the point it would have uh, intercepted our course, it would have been towards the bow of our ship. So that's very interesting there. We're going to 30 knot speed, but uh, I will certainly take that bullshittery. Uh, <laughs> if it means we're not taking a torpedo with our Alaska. Um, does mean we have to watch out for the rest of our ships, of course. Uh, Philadelphia will want to change its uh, course the tiniest bit, but it is moving at full speed, and that should be fine. Uh, still nothing really sighted around the Iowa. We've taken a, a bit of shell fire, but nothing we can't recover from. Uh, the story is actually not taking any hits this particular battle, which is brilliant. Uh, and Oido is now sinking, which is excellent. We did focus fire that down very quickly once uh, the Alba sunk as well. And actually Australia now does uh, sight the rest of those torpedoes. We can see they're in quite the widespread there. So what I want to do is actually I think carry on the course with the Australia there. Go to fairly decent speed. Waller needs to watch out, but its total speed is now at 52% capacity and it's quite likely the ship's going down despite taking a, not taking a torpedo over here. Um, so we'll see what happens. It doesn't look like that can really move at the moment. Try and increase the speed for the sake of it there, but I'm not entirely sure. Looking at uh, the mark of that torpedo, it looks like that might just miss if we really get our speed up quickly. I should be feeding that into the torpedo, but really that's going down either way, I think, with all of that fire and flooding anyway. So uh, we're going to be saying goodbye to this particular Fletcher, I think. Hold your breath. There we go. Not amazing. Not amazing, but uh, it's a destroyer that, you know, Fletcher's specifically come in droves. 
We need to uh, retarget our ships though because they're just being wasted at the moment. Let's go and focus fire onto an Akazuki over here with some larger guns, shall we? Alaska can fire out onto the number two as well. Lovely stuff. Start with some HE. Iowa, mm, how are we doing against this one? Yeah, I think what we can do is just focus on this number two to begin with there. It's not taking any hits so far. I'll we'll double check that Philadelphia is firing onto the number six as well, so that should start taking some hits. You can see it's listing a tad there. We do take an action report actually, just to pause again. Uh, we do see that number one's on heavier moderates and heavier moderates on the six as well, so focusing the two is probably the better idea at the moment. You can see the problem with, uh, even though uh, we're at somewhat point blank range, uh, these emergency of 3D torpedoes, uh, being allied torpedoes, are very slow. A little more uh, reliable than American torpedoes, but the speed on them is just abysmal to really make any sort of difference. You need to be somewhat, well, you, can, you need to be able to reach the, uh, the ships with your hands if you want to hit them on the surface there. But the Waller is now sinking, for sure, and that is a shame. But uh, we can certainly replace that fairly easily. It's just a couple ships now with the uh, 3D down as well. Going to be very susceptible to uh, enemy torpedo submarine attacks. How are we doing against the number two Akazuki? Looks like we're getting some sorts of hits there. Fire amidships. Excellent stuff. How about this one? Looks like we're probably out of range actually with uh, what was firing that. I believe the Afridi and the Waller were firing at that, so that's probably not under fire directly at the moment. Going to want to turn around the Jackal though. So while we did manage to completely wipe out that small task force, it's not like we were without our losses ourselves. Did of course lose the Afridi and the Waller. Um, not too much of a bother. That does mean uh, we're pretty much clear over here despite having a possible submarine task force over here. I do want to pull out and refresh with this group though. We we'll go back to Renal Island to uh, replenish our ammo. And we will of course buy some more destroyers I think. Uh, to replenish there. Do we want to double check exactly what uh, damage we're on though? Uh, we might want to replace the tailor because that funnel damage is going to impede us later on. Might want to replace the Astoria there. Mm, it is serving well okay though so far. So I think what we'll do is we'll go to New Zealand to get a few more destroyers out. If we go to American I do like the idea of using uh, perhaps a Sims for some decent torpedo power there. And Benson's and Gleaves are just very good, of course, and so are Fletcher's. We'll get one of those out. For the sake of diversity, I think we'll get a Summers as well. I do like Summers, and that would be great stuff. 22 points, lovely stuff. We'll send those out to uh, Renault Island, actually, is where we're going with that a particular task force. That's great stuff. So the next thing now should be just uh, landing some supplies and such onto Guadalcanal. Well, just the next morning, we are able to drop off these uh, much needed supplies onto Guadalcanal. Let's do so now. And that is looking very, very healthy indeed. Let's go to it and finally upgrade that to a level four airfield there. So what do we need now? We only need our fuel and that's excellent. So we do need a fair bit of fuel. It's gonna take another trip or two. That's absolutely fine. And that does mean then we are in the final few days of this particular campaign. And I will say I'm fairly happy to be done with it. It's been going on for quite some time. It's been very tedious. We do have a lot of enemy losses. Let's just review what we have in the dockyard. A couple of days for a Tennessee and a New Orleans. Excellent. Uh, we do have a Kearsarge and a New Orleans going at uh, 12 and 13 days. Very interesting indeed. But it's another week or so for a Colorado. And I think really, what we're going to do is try and get together a massive, massive battleship group and really try and force an engagement with this Yamato uh, over the next few days. So that's going to be what we're doing, playing fairly passively, I think, around the centre of Guadalcanal so that we can get our supplies up unimpeded and really focus this uh, particular task force down. 
So let's retrieve out of uh, Guadalcanal. It's gonna take quite a while to get out. Uh, we have resupplied with Task Force Lightning over here at Renault Island. We're pushing up towards uh, the central Solomons here. We did not get rid of the tailor, decided against that, just to keep our ships afloat there for a little bit longer, a little more active. And Task Force Brawl has taken the straits over here with no sign of any enemy surface groups. So uh, fingers crossed we do bump into something quite meaty there to take on and really clear the way over here. You can see the uh, radio, or radar rather, uh, coverage of Guadalcanal at the moment and with that level 4 airfield we have a lot of Mitchells available which is very very useful indeed. But unfortunately those Mitchells are not going to be of any help in this engagement guys. At half past 8 in the evening Task Force Lightning has been caught unawares by a massive horrible enemy task force. We have a Nagato which is already firing its guns out towards us there. We are on its flank uh, which is going to be somewhat useful if we can uh, speed up and get right behind the enemy there. Um, we also have a Takao and a Mogami, as well as two Agno light cruisers. We haven't said, uh, there we go, picking up on the destroyers at the moment. We can see a single Akazuki to begin with there. Uh, but we are just holding with our Iowa so that we do get our guns into position there. And I think we'll fire out now with some spotting fire. Looks like we're taking we're taking hits already. Minor glancing shots onto the funnels of the Australia there. We are picking up on the rest of the destroyers now. So what do we have? We have a Fubuki over here with a number nine and what looks to be a Yugimo Kagero or Sashio once again at number 10. Are we getting any hits onto the enemy here? We're using our destroyers to light up the skies there with their spotting shells because they're going to be fiercely ineffective against the hard hitters here otherwise. We do need to build up our uh, solutions with those. Oh, lovely. Here's onto the Takao. We're using our uh, Philadelphia and Australia onto the Takao here. And the Alaska's firing out onto the Mogami. I was being aided by Astoria onto uh, the Nagato here. We are getting some near misses there. Let's take a quick action report. Uh, so Nagato is on minor damage, Takao is already on moderate which is great stuff, we've got to watch out for our pre-existing damage, it's going to hurt us already in this particular fight and that is going to be very very nasty indeed. What we want to do is probably speed up a tad, get to 31 knots where possible with this uh, group, we will stay in formation for the beginning of this uh, fight. We have taken some glancing shells, you can see some flooding has been caused on the uh, after the bow of the ship of our battleship here, not great, another one here hitting the director which is not amazing, suboptimal there, our destroyers taking hits as well as the Australia there, not great at all, might just want to break away here, but we're going at max speed with that as it is, I really think because we are going towards their flank here, can we get some sort of uh, torpedoes out? That would be useful. This is going to be a long, long fight. To get that as a two degree spread here, uh, we do have firing angles there. Looks like the enemy might just be deciding to uh, hover about and uh, mill about in a single position, circle around, not do too much there. Are we firing out? Not quite. We're going to want to try and get some better firing angles there. Hughes will want to get something out as well. Let's see if we can move down here. Once that re-established contact with the number seven, that's absolutely fine. It's one of their destroyers. Oh, we hear a big explosion there. It sounds like the Takao has taken another massive hit there, and it is listing, which is excellent. We need to get those guns offline though, because those are 203 millimeter guns. It will hurt when they hit us directly, of course. We even just need to splash next to our destroyers to hurt them. So I'm not liking the minimal damage to the Nagato. Looks like we're uh, hitting its funnel, causing some engine damage. It's going fairly slow, but it's hard to tell with the Nagato, which is uh, really limited on its maximum speed anyway. How are we looking with that, Iowa? Because it's reporting some good flooding there, yeah, across the board, really. Can we do anything about that? Let's move some damage control passes over towards that. If the Nagato is actually firing at, well, firing and moving at a slow speed, we'll hold here and try and get some more manual shots off, try and get the practice in there once again. Just wait for our reload. Uh, Jackal's struggling there, interesting. Let's break off then and just bring that around here. Bring that to max speed. 
Uh, Taylor, how are you looking? You probably want to break off as well with the uh, De Haven. Uh, let's bring that a little more succinctly then. Come on, there we go. Lovely stuff. We form up here. And they can break off and just push ahead like so. And that will allow us to get some more torpedoes off. We're finally firing with the Davis there as well. Uh, so Iowa is lacking in speed, as you can see. It's a critical major, <laughs> critical overall damage is not great. If we lose an Iowa today, we'll not be very happy at all. Looks like Nagato is pretty much sat still as it's rammed into the Mogami there. Excellent stuff. Let's get onto our guns then. Take that on to manual fire right on the tip there. We're at 8.6 kilometers. Have not stated that yet, so that should not be very long travel time whatsoever. Keep an eye out for that because that's got some very nice potential splash damage there. There we go, lovely stuff coming in. Excellent, 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 excellent. We have to keep doing that for our reload though. Keep readjusting our aim. Let's fire out again, we're getting very close. Might want to even to push in a tiny bit there. Fire a little far back so we can probably get both ships would be excellent. How is that to cow looking? Let's take another report. Uh, it is down here at critical to heavy. Hughes is at critical to heavy as well. Not a lot we can do about that though, unfortunately. What's our position here? Did fire out its torpedoes. Yeah, that's that's gonna go down, which is rather nasty. Getting uh, searchlights off, we're so close now. Not amazing. Not happy about that. That does mean we can take down the Takao that much quicker. Looks like its guns are still online. Some news there, Takao and Nagato are sinking. So we're just going to take two seconds to redirect our fire. But we have more pressing matters coming up. A massive wave of torpedoes are coming in for us now. And that's, of course, not great at all. Not great at all. Uh, because they're coming right towards our battered Iowa and our New Orleans heavy cruiser here. We're going to try and turn in towards them. It's probably the best course at the moment, but because we're so battered, our turning speed, efficiency, and just general speed, terrible. 67% for total speed. Luckily, actually, reading that properly, our turn is not the worst. I'm just making sure we're turning in with the uh, New Orleans here. Let's take off evade hazards because we need manual control there. Are we about to thread the needle? Looking at the map, we might just take one on the side there. Very, very nasty indeed. Exactly how did that work? Didn't manage to penetrate through our torpedo protection very luckily. But the New Orleans here is just refusing to turn around. So we are going to be taking perhaps a torpedo on the bow here. You can see... The stream just coming in here. Hold your breath. Brace. And it looks like that just passed. Just passed us there. Ruddy bloody hell. Well, the aim now is to disengage. Probably destroy that Mogami if possible. But it's taken zero hits by the looks of things. Our Alaska has let us down. <sighs> Where is Alaska? Why aren't you? Why aren't you getting good hits? Just not good, uh, not good solution there. Less than 70 is not really going to get the results you want. But it looks like the enemy wants to disengage as well. That Mogami is pulling away. Torpedo is clearly not going to hit for us. And I think really it's everyone smoke up, disengage, and run away. Live to fight another day, I think. Although having said that, we're certainly sending the uh, Iowa back. Look at that list. The bow pretty much submerged there. Mm. And we have lost, you can see we've lost the number one gun. Flooding and fire everywhere. We're not gonna get on top of that before uh, we get out of this particular engagement.
and with the Mogami finally going down to the bottom, we are escaping very, very happily there. Uh, not taking any direct losses ourselves, but we are going to have to spend a lot of time in the uh, dockyard once again. The Davis and the Hughes, we've only just brought out. This is their maiden battle, and they're already in critical damage. Uh, Iowa clearly in cr critical damage as well, so that's going to have to go back, I think, with the Astoria, really. Um, so that can finally uh, get repaired up. But... They do escape with their lives, and the Nagato, Mogami, and Takao cannot be saying the same. Those are three very nice assets the Japanese will no longer have, at least in the meantime, <laughs> in this area. So we're certainly pulling back with the whole task force all the way back to the New Hebrides there. That will take 24.3 hours. Let's have a look at the enemy's availability then. If we go to heavy cruisers, and we go to to cows out of the 25 in total because of this mod. Uh, we've sunk quite a few actually, but they have, mm, I th I'd say we've sunk over half of their uh, total units. I'm not gonna count this up right now. 23 total Mogamis available. And you can see we've sunk, uh, I'd say around half, maybe just under half of that total availability. As far as um, battleships go, we have Nagato, which has 10 in total. We've sunk one, two, three, three of those. Lovely. And uh, it's actually update day today, recording on that. So we now have a battle cruiser uh, list there, which is excellent. Uh, among perhaps the ability to finally conduct strategic bombing raids across uh, enemy uh, bases. So if we use heavy bombers, such as Mitchells, which are really medium bombers, of course, uh, B-17s and such, uh, we can probably use them to uh, bomb things like uh, the Shortland Islands and Buka. Not much point in doing that in this particular playthrough, but it's something uh, going ahead in the future, which is uh, much requested. But so I think doing that by itself, uh, it needs a bit more work. It needs a bit more uh, oomph to it, some more meat. But uh, that's a discussion for a later date, as we have, unfortunately, run out of time once again, guys. Thank you very much for watching. It's been rather an uh, interesting return to the game. <laughs> Taking some trades there we didn't really want to take. But of course, clearing the way for Guadalcanal once again to get these supplies on. Uh, the Australian supplies are very close as well at, let's check that, 4.7 hours uh, away from there, which is excellent for us. And that is... The, the last uh, few steps now to actually completing this campaign. So, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the future for the end of this uh, coming imminently, I would imagine. May all of your nights and days be auspicious. Goodbye. And just as a little Brucey bonus before we finish this uh, episode properly, I'm just uh, scousing around playing a uh, playing for myself um, at the end of that one, and a duck outside of um, Santa Cruz, I believe, has spotted a monster of a task force. Absolute monster. And if you haven't already seen, of course there's a Yamato, uh, but that... <laughs> Imagine saying Yamato is the least of your problems. Uh, we have four Unryus in this task force. Four armoured carriers in this task force. So that's something to deal with, perhaps. <laughs> I think dealing with that's going to be uh, ignoring it, to be honest. Uh, something to contend with at a later date. Uh, I shall see you in the future.